The large pharmaceuticals just dropped the results of their phase 2A trial for PP405. And let's just say the internet is definitely buzzing right now. Claims of hair regrowth in previously bald areas, rapid visible results, and a novel mechanism that could shift the hair loss landscape as we see it today. But here's the thing. Are these results as revolutionary as they sound? Or are we looking at another overhyped press release designed more to impress investors than to deliver real clinical insights? That is the subject for today's video. PP405 is a topical treatment developed by Pilage Pharmaceutical and Unlike finasteride, it doesn't block DHT, and yet again, unlike minoxidil, it does not focus on increasing blood flow. Instead, it goes way deeper. It targets the metabolic pathways of your hair follicle stem cells, which for obvious reasons are crucial for initiating new hair growth. Specifically, PP405 inhibits the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier leading to increased activity of lactate dehydrogenase or LDH. And why does that matter? Well, LDH has been shown in research to reactivate dormant stem cells. Potentially, it can waken up follicles that haven't produced hairs in a few years. So we are not just talking about slowing hair loss. We are actually looking at regenerating follicles that were essentially thought to be dead. The phase 2a trial included 78 men and women with androgenic alopecia, also known as male pattern baldness. They applied PP405 topically once daily for four weeks, followed by 12 weeks of monitoring. And the results, by week eight, 31% of the treated participants has more than 20% increased hair density. Meanwhile, the placebo group showed no such improvement. But let's be honest for a second. 20% sounds great, but what does it actually mean? If somebody starts with, let's say, 40 hairs per square centimeter and a 20% boost equals only 8 new hairs, which is not a lot to boast. But then again, 20% is still something if you are looking at 100 hairs per square centimeter. So it might still have a lot of potential depending on what the numbers of hair that was recovered in the study was, especially when you consider that most treatments take three to six months to show visible results. PP405 is working in just weeks. And what is also important is that the study confirmed no systemic absorption, which is critical because mitochondrial pathways is impacting all of our cells. The fact that it stays local on the scalp just makes it so much safer to look at. But as exciting as this sounds, we need to keep our expectations in check. Because here's what we don't know. We don't know anything about the full results from the full 12-week follow-up period. No actual hair count figures or before and after photos were released. There's no statistical values like p-values or error margins. And most importantly, no peer-reviewed paper yet. This data came from a press release and not a scientific journal. That doesn't make it fake, but it means that we can't really verify or evaluate it probably yet. Its information is from the company and likely is written for the investors and not the clinicians. So just keep that in mind when we're looking at the data. But what about comparison to finasteride or minoxidil? This is where things get really interesting because PP405 doesn't mess with hormones, which alone is a huge win for people who wants to avoid finasteride due to the risk of sexual side effects. And it does not rely on vasodilatation like minoxidil, which increases blood flow but does not address the follicle issue with dormancy. Instead, PP405 aims to wake up the dormant stem cells, which is a completely different and possibly more advanced mechanism of action. That said, don't expect it to outperform finasteride or dutasteride across the board just yet. The current data does not suggest that it can match those medications in total regrowth, but it might fill in key gaps, especially for stubborn areas like the temples or the crowns, which personally I also struggle with. 
So personally, I would love to try out PP405 together with my RU58841 and do test ride mix to see how it would work together. Since I can't use Minoxidil, I think this is a great option to add on my own personal stack. So here's the bottom line. Yes, PP405 is legitimately exciting. The science is compelling. The early data is better than most new treatments. And if those claims of regrowth in bald areas are true, this could be the first treatment with real regenerative potential. But we're just not there yet. The trial isn't fully published and the product won't be available for years. And early stage hype has fooled us before. Let's just look at Kinta with the pyrolutamide. So don't throw away your current stack and don't stop on IU584 for one if you've done that already. But stay informed because this is definitely worth watching. So is PP405 going to change everything? Maybe. It's still way too early to tell. But this is one of the most interesting developments we've seen in years, in my opinion. And I'll be covering every step of this as it moves into phase 2B. So if you want to know more about how Pilates Pharmaceuticals is developing PP405, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.